George the fifth, and he is out of there. So uh, okay, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, don't have to worry about it. Except okay. that there probably will be work. a first and second. <laughs> okay. Uh, in, in the, so uh, just just uh, apologies in advance. This is my first uh, Shakespeare kind of. Uh, we're gonna give you such a treat. <laughs> interaction. <laughs> so apologies uh, in advance. <laughs> and being being the first. Apologize. Being the first uh, early play that we'll be reading, uh, you get a double treat. Actors to the stage. Actors to the stage. One yes. more consideration. This is the second longest play Shakespeare ever wrote. Is that true? <laughs> oh, wow. okay. It's only oh. talk about Hamlet. Uh, did you make any cuts? Or is it Act two, scene one. London, the palace. <laughs> Enter King Edward the Fourth, sick. Queen Elizabeth, Dorset, Rivers, Hastings, Buckingham, Bray, and others. Why so now have I done a good day's work? <laughs> you peers continue this united league. I every day expect an ambassador from my redeemer to redeem me hence. And more at peace, my soul shall part to heaven since I have made my friends at peace on earth. Rivers and Hastings, take each other's hand Dissemble not your hatred. Swear your love. By heaven, my heart is purged from grudging hate. And with my hand, I seal my true heart's love. So thrive I as I truly swear the like. Take heed you daily not before your king. Lest he that is the supreme king of kings confound your hidden falsehood and a word either of you to be the other end. So prosper I as I swear perfect love. And I, as I love Hastings with my heart. Madam, yourself is not exempt from this, nor you, son Dorset, Buckingham, nor you, you have been fictitious, one against the other. Wife, love Lord Hastings. Let him kiss your hand. And what you do, do it unfeignedly. Dear Hastings, I will never more remember our former hatred. So thrive I in mind. Dorset. Embrace him. Hasting, love Lord Marcus. This inter interchange of love I here protest. Here my part shall be inviolable. Yes, so swear I, my lord. Now, princely Buckingham, seal thou this league with thy breath embracements to my wife's allies and make me happy in your unity. Never Buckingham doth turn his hate on you or yours, but with all duteous love doth cherish you and yours. God punish me with hate in those where I expect most love. When I have most need to employ a friend and most assured that he is a friend, deep, hollow, treacherous and full of guile be he unto me this do i beg of god when i am cold in zeal to your a uh, pleasing cordial princely buckingham is this thou vow unto my sickly heart there wanteth now our brother gloucester here to make the blessed period 
of this peace. And in good time, here comes the noble duke. Good morrow to my sovereign king and queen, and princely tis a happy time of day. <laughs> happy indeed. As we have spent the day, Gloucester, we have done deeds of charity. May peace of enmity, fair love of hate, between these swelling wrong, incensed peers. A blessed labor, my most sovereign liege, amongst this princely heap, if any here, by false intelligence or wrong surmise, hold me a foe. If I unwittingly or in my rage have not committed that is hardly borne by any in this presence, I desire to reconcile me to his friendly peace. Tis death to me to be at enmity. I hate it and desire all good men's love. First, madam, I entreat through peace of you, which I will purchase with my duteous service. Of you, my noble cousin, Buckingham, if ever any grudge were lodged between us, of you, Lord Rivers, and Lord Grey, of you, that without desert have frowned on me, dukes, earls, lord gentlemen, indeed, of all, I do not know the Englishman alive, with whom my soul is any jot at odds, more than the infant that is born tonight, I thank my God for my humanity. <laughs> a holiday shall be kept hereafter. I would to God all strifes were well compounded. My sovereign Lord, I do beseech your highness to take our brother Clarence to your grace. Why, madam, have I offered love for this to be so bouted in this royal presence? Who knows not? that the noble duke is dead. Mm. You do him injury to scorn his course. Who knows <laughs> not he is dead? Who knows he is? All seeing heaven, what a world is this? Uh, look I so pale, Lord Dawson is the rest. Ah, my great lord, and no one in the presence but this red color hath forsook his cheeks. Oh. Is Clarence dead? The order was reversed. But he, poor soul, by your first order died. <laughs> yeah. And that a winged mercury did bear some tardy cripple bore the counterman that came to lag to see him buried. God grant that some less noble and less loyal, near in bloody thoughts, but not in blood, deserves not worse than wretched Clarence did, and yet go current from suspicion. A boon, my sovereign, for my service is done. I pray thee peace. My soul is full of sorrow. Mm. I will not rise unless your highness grant. And say at once what is it thou request? The forfeit, sovereign, of my servant's life, who slew today a righteous gentleman, lately attendant on the Duke of Norfolk. Have I a tongue to do my brother's death, and shall that tongue give pardon to a slave? My brother killed in no man, his fault was fought. And yet his punishment was bitter death. Who stood to me for him? Who in my wrath kneeled at my feet and bid me be advised? Who spoke of brotherhood? Who spoke of love? Who told me how the poor soul did forsake the mighty Warwick and did fight for me? Who told me in the field of Tewksbury that when Oxford had me down and down, he rescued me, rescued me, and said, Dear brother, live and be king. 
and told me when we both lay in the field, frozen almost to death, how he did lap me even in his garments and did give himself all thin and naked to the numb, numb cold night. All this for my remembrance, British breath, safe simply plucked and not a man of you had so much grace to put it in my mind. But when your charter of your waiting vessels have done a drunken slaughter and defaced the precious image of our dear Redeemer, you straight are on your knees for pardon. Pardon, and I unjustly too might grant it you, but for my brother, not a man would speak, nor I ungracious speak unto myself for him. Poor soul, the proudest of you all have been beholding to him in his life, yet <coughs> none of you would once beg for his life. Oh God, I fear thy justice will take hold of on me and you and mine and yours for this. Come, Hastings, help me to my closet. Oh, poor Clarence. Uh, this is the fruit of rashness. Mark or do not tell that the guilty kindred of the queen looked pale when they did hear of Clarence's death. Oh, they did urge it still unto the king. God will revenge it. But come, let us in to comfort Edward with our company. We wait upon your grace. Seeing to the palace, enter the Duchess of York with two children of Clarence. Are you guys hearing this barking? Yeah, the bird like trapped in the wall or something scratching sure. <laughs> uh -huh. it's turned it's quite an imagination there <laughs> yeah, that's what it is <laughs> anyway team two the palace enter the duchess of york with two children of claren who's the boy okay and then you and, and all right okay yeah. And again, <laughs> here we go. Oh, tell me, yeah. tell me not, good. <laughs> not, are you playing the play? Let's start with Mike introducing the scene. Yeah, oh, let's yeah. try that. Yeah. Who, who's the boy again? I. Okay. Scene two, scene two, the palace. Enter Duchess of York with two children of Clarence. Tell me, good grandam, is our father dead? Who's the Duchess? No, boy. Why do you why ride? Why do? Why do you whip so off and beat your breast and cry, "Oh, Clarence, my unhappy son"? Una, in your script, is is that line the girl saying that? Yeah, it says daughter. Oh, wow. This is what mine says, too. It says the boy says that. Oh, the boy okay. says the next line. Why do you look on us? You'll Let's find start again. all the early Shakespeare Oh, ours, our show's different. Oh, yeah, we, we, different. Have, we have different scripts. Okay. They are different in the, the early Shakespeare. The line is different from the book, I guess. Oh, boy interesting. Girls, boy, girl, switch the two. Yeah. Error, in the, error in the bill. Okay, Shakespeare so. has done it. <laughs> Shall we start again? Uh, well, I don't know. We're just going to be like. Why don't well, we shoot down to Queen Elizabeth? We don't have to read. I want to hear the kids. Girl, kids we are great. Right. Okay, this thing well, we'll just, at all. We'll just, if you don't want, just improvise it. Whatever, Girl. whatever Una does, you do the other one. Got it. Okay, let's start. Okay, okay. See <laughs> two. The palace. Enter the Duchess of York with two children of Clarin. Tell me, good grandam, is our father dead? No, boy. 
Why do you weep so often, beat your breast, and cry, O oh, Clarence, my unhappy son? Why do you look on us and shake your head and call us wretches, orphans, castaways, if our noble father be alive? My pretty cousins, you mistake me much. I do lament the sickness of the king is loath to lose him, not your father's death. If I, it were lost sorrow to wail one that's lost. Then, Grandan, do you conclude that he is dead? My king, the king, my uncle, is to blame for this. God will revenge it, whom I will importune with daily prayers all to that effect. And so will I. Peace, children, peace. The king doth love you well, incapable and shallow in his You cannot guess who caused your father's death? Grandam, we can. For my good uncle Gloucester told me the king, provoked by the queen, devised impeachments to imprison him. And when my uncle told me so, he wept and hugged me in his arm and kindly kissed my cheek made me rely on him as a, as my father, and he would love me dearly as his child. Oh, that deceit should steal such gentle state, and with a virtuous wizard hide foul guile. He is my son, yea, and therein my shame. Yet from my dugs he drew not this deceit. Think you my uncle did Dissemble, Grandam? Aye, boy. I cannot think it. Mark, what noise is this? Oh, who shall hinder me to wail and weep, to chide my fortune and torment myself? I'll join with black despair against my soul, and to myself become an enemy. What means this scene of rude impatience? To make an act of tragic violence. Edward, my lord, my son, our king is dead. Why grow the branches when the root is gone? Why wither not the leaves that want their sap? If you will live, lament, if die, be brief, that our swine, swift-winged souls may catch the kings, or like obedient subjects follow him to his new kingdom of ne'er changing night. Ah, uh -huh. so much interest have I in thy sorrow as I had titled in thy noble husband. I have bewept a worthy husband's death and lived by looking on his images, but now two mirrors of his princely semblance are cracked in pieces by malignant death, and I for comfort have but one false glass which grieves me when I see my shame in him. Thou art a widow, yet thou art a mother, and hast the comfort of thy children left thee, but death hath snatched my husband from mine arms, and plucked two crutches from my feeble lips, Edward and Clarence, thou, what cause have I? Thine being but a moiety of my grief, to overgo thy plaints and drown thy cries. <laughs> good, good aunt, you weep not for our father's death. How can we aid you in our kindred tears? Our fatherless distress was left unmourned. Your widow did call to Lord, likewise be unwept. Give me no help in lamentation. I am not barren to bring forth complaints. All springs reduce their currents in my eyes, that I, being governed by the watery moon, may send forth plenteous tears to drown the world. Ah, for my husband, for my dear Lord Edward. Oh, uh, for our father, for our dear Lord Clarence. Alas, the both, both mine. Edward and Clarence. <laughs> what stay had I but Edward's, and he's gone? What, what stay, stay, stay had we but Clarence, and he's gone? gone. What stays had I but they? They are 
God. Was never widow had so dear a loss. Or never orphans had so dear a loss. <laughs> Was never mother's had so dear a loss. Alas, I am the mother of these moans. Their woes are parcels, mine a general. She for an Edward weeps, and so do I. I for a Clarence weep, and so does she. These babes for Clarence weep, and so do I. I for an Edward weep, so do not they. Alas, you three on me, threefold distressed, pour all your tears. I am your sorrow's nurse, and I will pamper it with lamentation. Comfort, dear mother, God is much displeased that you take with unthankfulness his doing. In common worldly things, tis called ungrateful, with dull unwillingness to repay a debt, which with a bounteous hand was kindly lent, and much more to be thus opposite with heaven. For it requires the royal debt it lent you. Madam, bethink you, like a careful mother of the young prince, your son, sent straight for him, let him be crowned. In him your comfort lives. Drown desperate sorrow in dead Edward's grave, and plant your joys in living Edward's throne. Uh, madam, have comfort. All of us have cause to wail dimming of our shining star, but not can cure their harms by wailing. Madam, my mother, I do cry, you mercy. I did not see your grace humbly on my knee. I crave your blessing. God bless thee and put meekness in thy mind. Love charity, obedience, and true duty. Amen. Make me die, good old man. That is the butt end of a mother's blessing. I marvel why her grace did leave it out. You cloudy princes and heart sorrowing peers that bear this mutual heavy load of moan. Now cheer each other and each other's love. Though we have spent a harvest from the king, we are to reap the harvest of his son. The broken rancor of your high swollen heart, but lately splintered, knit and joined together, must gently be preserved, cherished and kept. Me seemeth good that with some little train, forthwith from Ludlow, the young prince be fetched, Hither to London to be crowned our king. Why with some little train, my lord Buckingham? Marry, my lord, unless by a multitude the new healed wound of malice should break out, which would be so much the more dangerous by how much the estate is green and yet ungoverned, uh, where every horse bears his commanding rein and may direct his course as please himself. As well the fear of harm, as harm apparent, in my opinion, ought to be prevented. I hope the king made peace with all of us, and the compact is firm and true in me. And so in me, and so I think in all. Yet, since it is but green, it should be put to no apparent likelihood of breach, which happily by much company might be urged. Therefore, I say with noble Buckingham, it is meant so few should fetch the prince. So say I. Then be it so, and go we to determine who they shall be that straight shall post to Ludlow. Madam, and you my mother, will you go to give your censures in this weighty business? All our hearts. Uh, my lord, uh, whoever journeys to the prince, for God's sake, let not us two be behind. For, by the way, our short occasion has 
index to the story we late talked of to part the Queen's proud kindred from the King. Uh, my other self, my counsel's consistory, my oracle, my prophet, my dear cousin, I, like a child, will go by the direction toward Ludlow, then, for will not stay behind. Lord Ludlow then for will not stay behind. That's the way it goes. These are the two princes whom they are uh, going to eventually lock up into the tower. Uh, but uh, this following scene is uh, five gentlemen talking about these guys are too young to be a uh, king. So uh, what are we going to do? So. Right. We can skip this next scene and go on to the next scene. After scene that. four. Scene yeah. four. Roger. Well, this, but if I may interject, this does give us a chance to use our lower class Cockney accent. Since these yeah, are but of course. But I don't think we can read 15 minutes worth. Leilani wants to go to bed. <laughs> Is that Richard true, Leilani? Too. Richard oh, my too. son wants to use my uh, kitchen Richard after too, this is uh, over. Richard and too. probably he <laughs> lied. <laughs> All right. I stand, uh, I'll stand down in this case. Lovely, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Such oh, a gentleman. Okay. So, so are we jumping ahead to scene four then? That's yes. correct. That's All right. how it works, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we've skipped scene three. And we're jumping ahead to scene four, <laughs> London, the palace, enter the uh, archbishop of York, young York, Queen Elizabeth, and the Duchess of York. So thoughtful. Last York. night I hear that they lay in Northampton at Stony Stratford. Will they be tonight, tomorrow, or next day, they will be here. Long with all my heart to see the prince. I hope he is much grown since I last since last I saw him. But I hear no. They say my son of York has almost ordained him in his growth. I, mother, I would not have it so. Why, my good cousin, is it good to grow? Grandam, one night as we did sit at supper. My uncle Rivers talked how I did grow, more than my brother. I quoth my uncle, Gloucester, small herbs have grown, great weeds do grow, and since methinks I would not grow so fast, because sweet flowers are slow, and weeds make haste. Good faith, good faith. The, the saying did not hold in him that good object the same to thee. He was the wretchedest thing when he was young, so long a growing and so leisurely that if his rule were true, he should be gracious. Why, madame, so no doubt he is. I hope he is, but yet let mothers doubt. Now by my troth, if I had been remembered, I could have given my uncle's grace a flout to touch his growth nearer than he touched mine. How, oh, my young York, I pray thee, let me hear it. Mary, they say my uncle grew so fast that he could grow a crust at two hours old. Twas full two years ere I could get a tooth. Grandam, this would have been a biting jest. I pray thee, pretty York, who told thee this? Grandam, his nurse. His nurse? Why she was dead or thou was born? But twere not she, I cannot tell who told me. A parlous boy, go to, you are too shrewd. Oh, good madam, be not angry with the child. Pictures have ears. Here comes the messenger, what news? <laughs> Such news, my lord, as grieves me to unfold. How doth the prince? Well, madame, and in health. What is thy news? Lord Rivers and Lord Grey are sent to Pomfret. With them Sir Thomas Vaughan, 
prisoners. Who hath committed them? The mighty dukes Gloucester and Buckingham. For what offense? The sum of all I can, I have disclosed. Why or for what these nobles were committed is all unknown to me, my gracious lady. Ah, me! I see the downfall of our house. The tiger now has seized the gentle hind. Insulting tyranny begins to jet upon the innocent, and all is thrown. Welcome destruction and massacre. I see it as in a map, the end of all. Accursed and unquiet, wrangling days, how many of you have mine eyes beheld? My husband lost his life to get the crown, and often up and down my sons were tossed for me to joy and weep their gain and loss, and being seated and domestic broils, clean overblown themselves the conquerors make war upon themselves brother to brother blood to blood self against self oh preposterous and frantic outrage and and thy damned spleen or let me die to look on death no more come come my boy we'll choose sanctuary madam farewell Stay, I will go with you. You have no cause. Uh, my gracious lady, go, and thither bear your treasure and your goods. For my part, I'll resign unto your grace. The seal I keep, and so be tied to me, as well I tender you and all yours. Come, let's conduct you to the sanctuary. Act three. Scene one, London, a street. Enter the young Prince Edward, Gloucester, Buckingham, Cardinal, Catesby, and others. Welcome, sweet prince, to London, uh, to your chamber. Welcome, dear cousin, my thoughts sovereign. The weary way hath made you melancholy. No, uncle, but our crosses on the way have made it tedious, wearisome, and heavy. I want more uncles here to welcome me. Sweet prince, the untainted virtue of your years has not yet dived into the world's deceit. No more can you distinguish of a man than of his outward show, which, God he knows, seldom or never jumpeth with the heart. Those uncles which you want were dangerous. Your grace attended to their sugared words, but look not on the poison of their hearts. God keep you from them and from such false friends. God keep me from false friends, but they were none. My Lord, the Mayor of London comes to greet you. God bless your grace with health and happy days. I thank you, good my lord, and thank you all. I thought my mother and my brother York would long ere this have met us on the way. The, what a slug Bye. is Hastings. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Um, oh, what is it like darn it or shucks or. Like um, a spur. It's an <laughs> F word. <laughs> uh, yeah, like. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> Like, Five, <clears throat> what a slug is Hastings, that he comes not to tell us whether they will come or no. And in good time, here comes the sweating lord. <laughs> Welcome, my lord. What, will our mother come? On what occasion? God, he knows, not I. Queen, your mother, and your brother York have taken sanctuary. The tender prince would fain have come with me to meet your grace, but by his mother was perforce withheld. Why, what an indirect, peevish course is this of hers. Lord Cardinal, will your grace persuade the queen to send the Duke of York unto his princely brother presently? If she deny, Lord Hastings, go with him, and from her jealous arms pluck him perforce. My lord of Buckingham, if my weak artillery can from his mother win the Duke of York, come anon, expect him here. 
but if she be obdurate to mild entreaties, God in heaven forbid we should infringe the holy privilege of blessed sanctuary. Not for all this land would I be guilty of so deep a sin. You are too senseless, obstinate, my lord, too ceremonious and traditional, weird but with the grossness of his age. You break not sanctuary in seizing him. The benefit thereof is always granted to those whose dealings have deserved the place, and those who have the wit to claim the place. This prince hath neither claimed it nor deserved it, and therefore, in my opinion, cannot have it. Then, taking him from thence, that is not fair, you break no privilege nor charter there. Oft have I heard of sanctuary men, but sanctuary children there till now. My lord, you shall have earth or rule my mind for once. Come on, Lord Hastings, will you go with me? I go, my lord. Good lords, make all the speedy haste you may. Say, Uncle Gloucester, if our brothers come, where shall we sojourn till our coordination? Uh, where it seems best unto your royal self. If I may counsel you some day or two, your highness shall repose you at the tower. Then, where you please, and shall be thought most fit for your best health and uh, recreation. I do not like. I do not like the tower of any place. Did Julius Caesar build that place, my lord? He did. My yeah, great sorry, lord, ahead, he no. built that place, which since succeeding ages have re-edified. Oh. Is it upon record, or? else reported successively from age to age he rebuilt it upon record my gracious lord but say my lord it were not registered methinks the truth should live from age to age as twere retailed to all posterity even to the general all-ending day mm, so wise so young they say do never live long what say you uncle oh i i say Without character, fame lives long. Thus, like the formal vice, uh, iniquity, I immortalized two meanings. <laughs> One word. That Julius Caesar was a famous man. With what his valor did enrich his wit, his wit set down to make his valor live. Death makes no con conquest of this conqueror, for now he lives in fame. Thought not in life i'll tell you what my cousin buckingham what uh, my uh, grace lord and if i live until i be a man i'll win our ancient right in france again or die a soldier as i lived a king short summers lightly have a forward spring oh <clears throat> in good time here comes the duke of york richard of york how fares our loving brother well my dread lord so must I call hey, you now? Hey, brother, to our grief, it is yours. Too late he died that might have kept that title, which is which by his death hath lost much majesty. How fares our cousin, noble Lord of York? I thank you, gentle uncle. Oh, my lord, you said that idle weeds are fast in growth. The prince my brother hath outgrown me for. He hath, my lord. And therefore is he idle? Oh, my fair cousin, I must not say so. Then he is more beholding to you than I. He may command me as my sovereign, but you have power in me as in a kinsman. I pray you, uncle, give me this dagger. My dagger, little cousin, with all my heart? A beggar, brother? Of my kind uncle, that I know will give, and being but a toy, which is no grief to give. A greater gift than that I'll give my cousin. A greater gift? Oh, that's the sword to it. Uh, a gentle cousin, were it light enough. Oh, then I see you will part with but light gifts. In weightier things, you'll say a beggar, nay. Oh, it is too heavy for your grace to wear. 
I wore it lightly, wore it heavier. What? Would you have my weapon, little lord? I would, that I might thank you as you call me. Oh. Little. <laughs> my lord of York will still be cross and talk. Uncle, your grace knows how to bear with him. You mean to bear me, not to bear with me. Uncle, my brother mocks both you and me, because I am little like an ape. He thinks that you should bear me on your shoulders. With uh, oh, what a sharp provided witty reason to mitigate the scorn he gives his uncle, he prettily and aptly taunts himself. So cunning and so young is wonderful. My lord, will it please you pass along? Myself and my good cousin Buckingham uh, will to your mother to entreat of her to meet you at the tower and welcome you. What? Will you go unto the tower, my lord? My lord protector means will have it so. I shall not sleep in quiet at the tower. Why? What should you fear? Mary, my uncle Clarence's angry ghost. My granddam told me he was murdered there. I fear no uncle's dead. Nor none that live, I hope. And if they live, I hope I need not fear. But come, my lord, with a heavy heart, thinking on them, go I unto the tower. Think you, my lord, this little prating York was not incensed by his subtle mother to taunt and scorn you thus opprobriously? No doubt, no doubt. Oh, tis a parlous boy, bold, quick, ingenious, forward, capable. He is all the mothers from top to toe. Well, let them rest. Come here there, Catesby. Thou art sworn as deeply to effect what we intend as closely to conceal what we impart. Thou knowest our reasons urged upon the way. What thinkest thou? Is it not an easy matter to make William Lord Hastings of our mind for the installment of this noble duke in the seat royal of the famous isle? He, for his father's sake, uh, so loves the prince that he will not be won to aught against him. So what thinkest thou then of Stanley? What will he? <laughs> he will do all in all as Saint Hastings doth. <laughs> well then, no more but this. Go, gentle Catesby, and as it were far off sound thou, Lord Hastings. How doth he stand affected to our purpose? <laughs> and summon him tomorrow to the tower to sit about the coronation. If thou dost find him, in tra find him tractable to us, encourage him. And show him all our reason. If he be leaden, icy cold, unwilling, be thou so too, and so break off your talk, and give us notice of his inclination. For we tomorrow hold divided counsels, wherein thyself shall be highly employed. Commend me to Lord William. Tell him Catesby, his ancient knot of dangerous adversaries, tomorrow are let blood at Pomfret Castle. Bid my friend, for joy of this good news, give Mistress Shore our gentle kiss the more. Good gates we go, effect this business soundly. My good lords both, with all I heed I can. Shall we hear from you, Catesby, ere we sleep? You shall, my lord. Oh, it cross... Crosby's place, there shall you find us both. Now, my lord, what shall we do if we perceive Lord Hastings will not yield to our complot? Chop off his head, man. Some of you <laughs> do. And look, I am king. Claim thou of me the earldom of Hereford, Hereford and the movables whereof the king my brother stood possessed. I'll claim that promise at your grace of hand. <laughs> ah, and look, to have it yielded with all willingness, come let us sup betimes, that afterwards we may digest our complots in some form. 
And with that, let's take a break and be back here in 10 minutes. I don't think, oh, here's my clock. <laughs> I'm going to wow. play the other side now <laughs> to show you guys what, what an actor can do here. Then. Grind those tater Ooh. chips. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Are those chips made out of potatoes? <laughs> I got a dried mango. <laughs> nice. Oh, now I'm jealous. It's like eating a banana, so I grabbed a banana too. <laughs> okay, <try mango. laughs> show, show us your snacks. Did you did you see the oh, stack with a banana too? <laughs> I, have I, got, I have one large cookie. Oh my! Oh my God! God. I got my it's beer. Real. Since you're showing off everything, I thought I'd show that too. What's I want to go to Jim's house. Jesus. Let's all go to the snack bar. Let's all go to the snack bar. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> when you get here. Oh, oh, there's Milo. See? Mm. All right. Here we go. Scene oh, two. No. Wait a minute. For Lord Hastings, Cow, enter a messenger. Is there any advice for, for my reading so far? Before? <laughs> uh, I think I'd leave that to Richard and you to work that out. I will okay. give you something. So. <laughs> Actually, you're doing very good. You're doing so, really I'm, good. I've always found you're doing, yeah, you're doing you're doing fine, Eli. You're, yeah, doing, you're doing okay. You're doing actually better than some other people now. Everyone else here. <laughs> so. <laughs> you're doing well. I, Best advice is I like to do with messengers because it's like messengers are like running, you know, and so he might be out of breath when he gets there to Don't deliver. Don't saw message. the air too much with your hand. Yeah, <laughs> let the words right. fall trippingly from the tongue. Yeah, that's for me. <laughs> Speak the speech, I pray you. Are we no, doing you're doing good. good. You're doing good. Thank you. I just don't want. I just don't want to be rude because I'm going to check out here, and and I just don't want you to feel like I'm shunning you. Well, you got to stay for a horse, a horse. That's all. <laughs> Well, let's go there. <laughs> hey! Go okay. right. scene, two, scene two, before Lord Hastings Town, enter a messenger. What? Oh, my lord. Who knocks at the door? A messenger from Lord Stanley. What is it, O'Clock? Upon the stroke of four. Cannot thy master sleep these tedious nights? So it should seem by that I have to say, first he commends him to your noble lordship. And then? And then he sends you word. He dreamt tonight the boar had raised him helm, his helm. Besides, he says there are two councils held, and that may be determined that the one which may make you and him to rule at the other. Therefore, he sends to know your lordship's pleasure if presently you will take his horse with him. And with all speed, post with him toward the north, to shun the danger that his soul divines. Go, fellow, go. Return unto, unto thy lord. Bid him not fear the separated counsels, his honor. Myself are at the one, and at the other is my servant Catsby, where nothing can proceed that touches us, whereof I shall not have intelligence. Tell him his fears are shallow, wanting instance. For his dreams, I wonder he is so fond, Trust the mockery of unquiet slumbers. Fly the boar before the boar pursues, or to incense the boar to follow us, make pursuit where he did mean no chase. Go, bid thy master rise and come to me, and we will both together to the tower, where he shall see the boar will use us kindly. My gracious Lord, I'll tell him what you say. Many good morrows to my noble Lord. Good morrow, Caspi. You are early stirring. What news, what news in this our tottering <laughs> state? It's a reeling world indeed, my lord, and I believe that we'll never stand upright till Richard wear the garland of the realm. Oh, wear the garland? Dost thou mean the crown? Aye, my good lord. I'll have this crown of mine cut from my shoulders ere I will see that crown so foul misplaced. But canst thou guess that he hath done aim at it? I, on my life, 
and hopes to find you forward upon his party for the gain whereof, and thereupon he sends you this good news, that this very same day your enemies, the kindred of the queen, must die at Pomfret. Indeed, I, I'm no mourner for that news, because they've been still mine enemies, but that I'll give my voice on Richard's side, bar my master's heirs is true descent. God knows I will not do it to the death. God keep your lordship in that gracious mind. And I shall laugh at this a twelve month hence, they that who brought me in my master's hate. I live to look upon their tragedy. I tell thee, case me. Well, Tis a vile thing to die, my gracious lord. No, not until there's a fortnight, make me elder. I'll send some packing that yet think not on it. Ah, well, tis a vile thing to die, my gracious lord, when men are unprepared and look not for it. Oh, monstrous, monstrous. So falls it out with rivers, Vaughan, Gray, and so twill do with some men else think themselves as safe as thou and I, who, as thou knowest, are dear to princely Richard and to Buckingham. The princes both make high account of you, for they account his head upon the bridge. <laughs> I know they do. And I have well deserved it. Come on, come on. Where is your boar spear, man? Fear you the boar? <clears throat> Go so unprovided? <clears throat> My lord, good morrow, good morrow. Catesby, uh, you may jest on, but by the holy root, I do not like these several counsels, I. My lord, I hold my life as dear as you do yours. Never in my life I do protest. Was it more precious to me than tis now? Think you, but that I know our state secure, or would be so triumphant as I am? The lords at Pomfret, when they rode from London, were jocund, and supposed their state was sure. And they indeed had no cause to mistrust. But yet, do you see how soon the day or cast this sudden stagger rancor I misdoubt? Pray God, I say, I prove a needless coward. What shall we toward the tower? The day is spent. Come, come, have with you what you want, my lord. Today, the Lord, you talk of our beheaded. They, for their truth, might better wear their heads and some that have accused them wear their hats. <laughs> but come, my lord, let us away. Long before, I'll talk with this good fellow. How now, Sirrah? How goes the world with thee? Well, the better that your lordship please to ask. Tell me, man. It's better with me now than when I met thee. Last where we now we meet. Then was I going to prisoner to the tower by the suggestion of the queen's allies. And now I tell thee, keep it to thyself. This day those enemies are put to death, and I in better state than e'er I was. God hold it to your honor's good content. For mercy, fellow. Here, drink that for me. God save your lordship. Well met, my lord. I am glad to see your honor. I thank thee, good Sir John, with all my heart and in your debt for your last exercise. Come the next Sabbath and I will content you. What, uh, talking with a priest, Lord Chamberlain? Your guests at Pomfret, they do need the priest. Your honor hath no shriving work in hand. Good faith, when I met this holy man, those men you talk of came into my mind. What, go you toward the tower? I do, my lord, but long I shall not stay. I shall return before your lordship then. Tis like enough, for I stay dinner there. Yeah, sup too, though thou knowest it not. You come, uh, will you go? I'll wait upon your lordship. Scene three, Pomfret Castle. Enter Rathcliffe, the elders, carrying rivers, gray and bar. Come, four, three-fourths of prisoners, 